Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. My name is Marian and I'm your host today and I'm going to give you a new update coming from Shanghai, Giga Berlin, 46, 80 salts and more. So glad to have you here. If you're new to my channel or you didn't subscribe yet, do consider subscribing to get a lot of news from Europe and Shanghai. So let's start with Shanghai. There's sometimes a confusion, but you see there are two harbors. One is in the south and that is the correct harbor for all exports happening from the Shanghai factory. But many times people do hope for the Tesla so much that they believe it could come from the North Harbor with a different ship. That is not the case. Vuva has made a video confirming that one more time. Then we also know that ships will come this week, um, hopefully um, the first ship going to Europe then. Then looking into the Chinese market with 133,000 Model Y, Tesla is just crushing competition out there. It's just crazy how good Tesla is doing in China. Just remember that there's one difference between Austin or the United States and Europe. There is a big, big market share with the Model Y standard range, but we will look into that version later on. First of all, we see the first Model Y long range being on the parking lot. I received these images from um, a viewer on my Tesla Mac channel. So um, we do confirm now that the Model Y long range is actually already out there, but not at customer's side yet. So they're just gonna use that maybe in showrooms or testing. Um, so I believe after the upgrade we are currently being um, see seeing in Giga Berlin, I do expect that Tesla is gonna take some time to ramp up again. And afterwards, we will most likely see the Model Y long range coming out of Giga Berlin for customers as well. Furthermore, for the people watching from the UK, um, I reported about three and a half, four weeks ago, they were testing as well cars being built for the UK market. So maybe after this upgrade, they will be actually capable of doing that, not only for the long range, but as well for the Model Y performance. So I'm very, very keen to look forward to that. So please let me know if you're from the UK market, because this could help to shorten your delivery times. Then also looking to the UK, something we are really looking forward in the European Union is um, a proper sign recognition. Speed sign recognition is a major issue here in Germany. Currently, if you drive your car and um, the camera is seeing the speed recognition, is a switching after you have passed the sign. In the UK now, we got an update which is showing that it's actually switching once it is approaching the um, speed sign, which is more correct because if you want to go with robo taxis and autopilot, you pretty much have to have a system that works the way that it is seeing the speed sign before you pass by the speed sign because there's a rule in Germany that around 50 to 60 meters behind the speed sign, you can actually get a ticket if you're still too fast. Then looking into the automotive industry, we have the BEV, so the electric vehicle penetration curve. So we see a major increase when it comes to the penetration curve worldwide. And there are two factors for that. First of all, lots more EVs out there. This is one thing, more and more companies concentrating on that. But the share as well increased because we have less ICE cars being produced, especially in the first half of this year. So it really helps as well the market penetration. If we are looking into the growth, despite all the issues, um, just having a little dip um, at the time when um, Tesla was actually starting to produce the first Model 3s. Despite that, we always have seen some proper growth of Tesla. And despite the lockdown and everything that we have seen in, in this place happening in the past weeks, I do expect this growth rate to continue in 2022. So that is very exciting as well. Then we're looking into Germany as my home country. I'm just going to share you what is going on here. So first of all, we see a major drop after the fourth quarter. Um, we are just slightly higher than last year at the same time. And there is a reason behind that. We have the war in uh, Ukraine. So we had to stop production of many facilities in Germany. Um, Tesla was not really having an issue so far. Um, but this was one of the major issues that it, uh, VW couldn't contribute to the numbers as good as they were expecting to do it. Um, I do expect a major increase in the second half of the year because now it's getting all ready to go. 
um, they want to actually deliver the first ID bus by the end of the year. So um, I do believe the numbers will increase. You see a lot of plug-in hybrids. I do expect that to actually go down because um, the uh, government is not going to support any plug-in hybrids anymore. Then we're looking into the global supercharging station growth because Sarah Merritt is making here a very, very nice GIF just showing how fast this has happened in the past years. Now for the 4680 pack, there's an update as well. So as I'm living in Germany, I sometimes get through my German channel information that I can provide with you. So what I know now, and of course, these are people working um, sometimes inside the factory. So I cannot name their name, um, but I just trust those sources. And I do know that inside here, um, there's information that by the end of the year, they're actually going to test the 4680 battery pack in um, yeah company owned cars like they did in Austin. They're going to do that first and afterwards they're going to deliver it to customers. There is no confirmation of a Model Y standard range, but as I talked about China, I think that would be uh, demand through the roof. It would really help to accelerate as well the numbers for the European market. So I do expect Tesla doing that actually um, as well, like in Austin with the 4680 battery pack by the end of the first quarter of 2023. That's like my time frame I would give you where I'm pretty sure Tesla should be able to do that. Testing the cars by the end of the year is already pretty ambitious, but I think they can do that. Uh, the building is actually getting ready outside. So when it comes to the time frame, it's pretty much all um, work inside right now. And we have seen how fast Austin was capable of actually establishing everything inside. So I'm actually very, very confident that Tesla will be able to do that by the end of the year, test production, test vehicles, and then end of the Q1 next year, I'm um, being able to deliver the first cars to customers in a standard range variant. That is my projection. Then we're looking into the stock being up 15% over the past week. And we also know that Tesla still has some catch up to do when it comes to the year over year. But I think that is just a question of time and they will actually do that by the second half of the year, especially now as the stock market is actually coming a bit down and I do expect um, great results happening in the second half of the year. So thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. And if you're new to my channel, do consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that as well. And so we are looking forward to more news or I'm looking forward with you together for new news tomorrow. Thank you very much.